really good to be here. Like, um, it's just occurred to me, actually, my last talk was at a Selenium conference uh, like four years ago, so it's nicely bookended my pandemic. How about you? Um, oh, I promised myself I wouldn't mention the pandemic straight away, and here I am. Um, yeah, so I'm here today to talk about kind of this question, what do you do in test automation? And I realized as I started putting this together that this is kind of a conclusion to something that I've been working on for like the last 10 years. I should probably clarify some bits and pieces before we get into this. So when I talk about what do you do in test automation, uh, whether you are an SDET, a test automator, QA automation specialist, a developer of some kind, I'm kind of referring to all of us in this context. It's basically someone that's got some sort of automation tasks in their role. The second thing is, is that this talk is not about how to explain what you do to your family or to your parents, where you get that sort of blank look of, like, what do you do? Like, mm -hmm, I don't get it. Although, like, I couldn't help myself but share this, but um, years ago, my sister very proudly like, looked at me. And she was like, I know what you do. You're a tester. You test things. And being the supportive brother that I am, I went, well, what does that mean? And she sort of shrugged and went, I don't know, binary? <laughs> so, she was a teacher at the time. I was like, that's the equivalent of me saying to you, pencils. It's just, yeah, <laughs> unnecessary. No, what this is about is, uh, this is actually asking ourselves as automators this question. Because I think there's a lot of interesting stuff that we can discover through this question. I think the reflection is really, really hard. And through my experiences of working as an educator in automation, I've, I've seen, like, when I ask this question to people, or when I ask sort of related questions to automation, that it can be quite tricky to sort of kind of answer it. And because of that, because that reflection is hard, sometimes we don't really have an explicit sense of what it is that we do, which makes it harder to communicate our value. And that's what I've been trying to work on for these last 10 years. Like, the first time I, I gave a talk related to this was a meetup in London 10 years ago um, called What's So Great About WebDriver? You know, nothing like an incendiary line like that to uh, start a conference like this. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I was interested in this, like, why are, we talking, uh, why are we talking about tools? Why aren't we talking about the wider gamut of automation? So to do this, um, I'm going to share a little bit about myself and a little bit about the work that I've been doing uh, with my colleagues. I'm also going to get to know you all a little bit. This is going to be a participation-based talk. Hopefully the tech will work. We shall see. I've never used Slido before in this sort of context, so uh, yeah, this will be exciting. Yeah, so uh, I feel like as I'm on the stage, I should be the one to start. So yeah, my name is Mark. Um, I currently work in Ministry of Testing. Uh, some of you uh, may have heard of us, uh, some of you may not. I can see like members of our testing community in the audience, which is always fantastic to see. Um, you know, we, we see ourselves as kind of a, a community of testers um, uh, created by testers. So although I'm at Ministry of Testing, uh, my background is testing, automation, consultancy, contracting, stuff like that. And I'll share some of my experiences and stories uh, in a minute. Uh, but I joined Ministry of Testing because I'm really passionate about teaching. I love teaching. It's a weird thing to say because all of my family have sort of, sort of ended up in teaching in some shape, form, or manner, and I was like, I don't want to do that. And I ended up doing it. <laughs> it's mad. So. But I, I, like, I like teaching. I like advocating for good uh, testing practices and automation practices. So that's how I kind of ended up at Ministry of Testing. And part of what that is, is um, I've created this uh, training with my colleague Richard Bradshaw called Automation in Testing. And, and I mentioned some of this stuff because um, the direction my career has gone has been focused on this question, what do we do as automators? Um, and it's, you know, through my experiences of working at MOP, through my experiences of doing the automation and testing stuff, that I can, I've sort of seen this sort of common patterns and discussions that happen. I've also created a couple of applications as well, uh, RESTful Booker and RESTful Booker Platform. You can find them on GitHub. Um, they are free to use APIs and applications to practice uh, automation against as well. Um, there's a calendar in RBP that everyone hates. And as everyone tells me, they go, I hate that calendar on your application. It sustains me. It makes me feel so good. So uh, yeah. Evil, evil. 
but yeah, so that's kind of where I am at the moment. Um, and I say a lot of like my own, like where I am now has been informed by this question, what do automators do? So it's a little bit about me and, and where I am as well. But I want to get to know you all. I have three questions that I want to ask you. So to do this, you're probably going to need uh, your phone um, or maybe your laptop set up. Um, and I've got, yeah, just three quick questions that I want to ask you. I want you to give me you know, very quick answers to, as an automator, what do you do on a daily basis, a weekly basis, and a monthly basis? So try not to think too much about, like, like don't overanalyze it. What comes to mind as you, uh, as you fill those items in? Um, and again, you know, be nice. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, this is a, a, an interesting question to use because you know it, we're reflecting across different time boundaries, and you know this helps us to sort of kind of start that process of answering that question of what do we do. So whilst you're all filling in, let me share a little bit more about myself. I want to go back to like when I first started getting into automation and getting into testing. Um, and when I get asked this question, like, Mark, how did you get into testing? I always give my, my favorite line, which is, I didn't mean to be a tester. I was supposed to be a rock star. It's nothing like being you know, a professional individual and sticking a photo like that up on the stage. But yeah, I wanted to, I, I wanted to actually, I wanted to write music for video games. Um, that was what I wanted to do. So I was a huge gamer at the time. And I'd heard incorrectly, I want to make this very clear, incorrectly, but I'd heard the rumor that to get into the video game industry, you get in via testing. It's a foot in the door. Uh, but unfortunately, I couldn't really get a job because they were all the, you know, must work on project for zero dollars an hour, um, must have three years experience sort of stuff. Anyway, I ultimately ended up getting a job as a junior tester testing music software. Because my background actually is in music. I have two music degrees. Um, curious, uh, hands up uh, those of you who, are, who, who have come into testing but from like a non-computer science background. Like, yeah? Yeah. So uh, uh, it's one of the things I love about like the testing industry and the testing community is we're a weird bunch and we've come from some weird places. But the reason why I mention this is then, again, it frames this sort of challenge with this question of what do we do as automators. A lot of us come into this industry with very little formal education from it. Yes, there are transferable skills. Like for me, for my music degrees and stuff, I developed strong analytical skills. Um, I developed a lot of you know, understanding about creativity and working with people. You, know, you try working with a string quartet or a large orchestra and getting them to do what you want them to do. It's difficult stuff. But there's transferable skills, but there's nothing ever expli explicitly explained about testing in that sort of sense. And that kind of informs, I think, an experience that we've all had, and it's an experience that I had. So I got this job as a junior tester, um, and very early on, I started hearing about automation, and was like, hmm, this sounds really interesting. This sounds kind of up my alley. I had been building websites, I'd been doing a bit of coding in my free time, and I was like, yeah, I really want to get into this automation space. Yeah, it sounds really interesting. I was really lucky that um, I ended up moving jobs, and I, I found a mentor, uh, a chap called Fahad Minas, and he um, saw in me this interest, this desire to become uh, an automator, and he basically was like, okay, you're now our automator for the team, learn how to do this, start delivering value. And it was really interesting like, uh, listening to Erica's talk yesterday when she talked about 65% of us learn on the job. I was definitely in that 65% at that point. I literally was sort of kind of put into the shark pool and was sort of told, you know, what, what, you know, what do I need to do? And I think that's interesting because, again, going back to this idea of what do we do as automators, I had to learn that. I had to sort of somehow work out what it meant to be an automator. I had a choice to make. And unfortunately, and I think this is an experience I think some of us have all had, is I don't think I chose the right path. So I chose this question. 
I want to get into automation. What tool should I learn? Now, some of you might be just starting your sort of automation journeys, your automation careers, and you might be experiencing the same thing, thinking this question. Some of you may be more sort of senior, experienced people or managers, and you may be getting asked that question. I get asked this a lot through AIT and through the Ministry of Testing work that I do. And I think this is a really interesting question. This, this is what's bothered me for the last 10 years. Why are we asking about tools as the first thing? I had that choice to make when I first started. I didn't ask, what does an automator do? Or how do I deliver value? I just went, what tool should I learn? So uh, this question, I say, has bugged me over the last 10 years. And I've done some research. And um, like, I've done this a few times, but I wanted to sort of kind of update it for today and like, explore what sort of messaging, what sort of image of an automator is being presented from someone who's coming in from the outside. So I did two things. First of all, uh, I looked at Google. You know, you're starting out in automation. You want to do, um, excuse me, you want to, uh, you want to become an automator. So you go to Google, you get a bing if you hate yourself. Um, <laughs> You go to a cozier if you love the planet. God, that's weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you go onto some search site and you put a search term in like learning test automation. So you start going, yeah, I want to learn test automation. How do I do that? And you're presented with a bunch of links. So I, I, I set myself up a fresh search, you know, made sure it wasn't something that was kind of biased based on cookies and behavior and things like that. And I put in learning test automation and I looked at those 20 results. And I sort of put them into different categories. Like, what different, uh, what, what, are these, what are the sites that I'm being taken to? Now, the eagle eyed views of you will see that uh, that does not count up to 20. That isn't some attempt of putting a bug in. Uh, one of the uh, tool vendors had two hits to their site, to the same page. I can't remember which one, but whichever tool vendor it has, they need to pay that marketing manager more because their SEO is on point. But yeah, we had eight links to tool vendor pages talking about, like, like, how do you get into automation? What is automation? We had eight education sites. So these were literally links to sites like, I think, like Udemy, Pluralsight, um, you know, the big training platforms um, where you could purchase a structured course on learning automation. And then three of those were kind of clickbaity articles, listicles that basically pointed back to the education sites. What was really interesting looking at those tool vendor sites and those education sites is, only one of them mentioned testing. All of them were saying, you need to learn tools. Specifically, you need to learn Selenium WebDriver. There was a little bit of a mention of Cucumber, a little bit of mention of Appium. Uh, there was some hints towards other UI tools. But it was basically, you know, the first thing I see as I search for this is a bunch of pages saying, you need to learn, uh, you need to learn Selenium WebDriver. You need to learn UI automation. You need to learn tools. So you start to see like, why this is the first question that people ask. I want to get into test automation. What tool should I learn? Because all of these links are telling you that. Um, yeah, so tools were mentioned uh, heavily. And then uh, code was also mentioned as well. So like, to be an automator, you need to learn to, have to code. Now, putting the codeless and coded uh, discussion to one side, you know, it kind of makes sense. Um, you know, you want people to be comfortable with, with a programming language or a scripting language to operate the tools. So this was mentioned in service to the tools as well. And then there was a couple of points where, like, DevOps was mentioned, but it was very sort of very vague. And I think it was more, actually, they wanted to talk about, like, continuous integration and continuous deployment. So, you know, what does an automator do? Well, Google tells me it's someone that operates tools. And then you start looking at job roles. So uh, again, for, like, uh, for this talk, I went on to indeed.com. I looked at US jobs, because I thought it would make it a bit more relevant. And I put in the term test automation. And I went through all of the job roles. Um, I'm a really exciting person, by the way. Like, I love this sort of stuff. <laughs> But I went through, I looked through all of the bullet points, I looked at all of like, the sentences that talked about roles and responsibilities. 
and I broke them into three different areas. So testing skills, so things that were explicitly sort of saying things that you need to do about test, testing. Uh, risk analysis, uh, writing and raising bug reports, uh, communicating quality, ensuring quality, whatever the hell that means. Um, but those things that don't really talk about automation, it's talking about testing in general. Then there's automation skills, and these are ones that don't explicitly mention tools, but kind of talk about some of the things we do in the automation space. Maintaining flaky tests, knowing what to automate, setting up environments, pipelines, that sort of stuff. And then tool skills. Literally, you must learn these tools. And again, what's really interesting here is, is that you know, it's a, it's, it's a first-class citizen to skill sets. More mentions, you know, I know it's only slightly more, 36% versus the 31 and 33, but tools are like more dominant. A whole third on average of these job roles is saying you need to learn tools. So you start to see this picture of what is being presented from kind of outside of what we do and outside of like the actual people who are doing the graft. There's this perspective of we have to learn tools. And this is the choice I made when I first started out. And I suspect maybe some of you have had the same experiences. I just picked up a tool. Uh, I started using Appadora. Does anyone recognize that? Yeah, oh, okay, the shaky hand there a little bit, yeah. Yeah, that says everything about its community. Uh, it didn't really work properly. The API docs were a little out of date, and I think I've still got a question that's left unanswered, and that's 15 years ago. So, you know, these things happen with open source communities. You know, some, some move on, some evolve, some, you know, just sort of kind of lose their support. But I picked that tool, and I stuck to it. And I picked my first regression test case off the top of the pile, and I started automating with my tool. And I even got into an argument with a developer who was like, we should use Selenium WebDrive. And I was like, what's that? Don't know that. It's not Appadora. <laughs> and they went, no, we're going with the developer. He's speaking sense. I quit. I'm going somewhere else. They'll appreciate my archaic, knackered uh, Python dependency. <laughs> I, I did see the light very soon after that and stuff. But, you know, uh, interesting, again, with Erica's talk yesterday, talking about those boxes that we, we set ourselves up. I was building my own box because I was focused on the tools. I wasn't doing things like talking about risk. I was not asking questions about my context. I wasn't even writing good automation. I hadn't even looked at like, you know, dry principles or anything like that. It was just like hundreds and hundreds of lines in one script. I didn't even version control it. What a cowboy. <laughs> But the point is, is that, yeah, I focused on the tools and I didn't focus on the wider aspects of automators. I didn't ask anyone who was working as an automator, what do you do? What are you involved in? And I think it's rooted in this, this, this problem here. The idea of what an automator does does not map the reality. And that's why I asked you those three questions earlier. What do you do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? Because all of that stuff, that's talking about tools. But I'm curious to see what you've all shared in terms of your answers. So just looking at the daily basis, I can see things like talking about pipelines, you know, meetings, you know, engaging with people, talking to people about automation. I can see um, some mentions here like code reviews, reviewing requirements, learning about the application under test learning about the system that you are automating. That's not tools, necessarily. Um, reporting, communicating, professional development, keeping up to date with the latest tools. Architecture, planning, and researching new tools again. Thank you very much for all of you that uh, added, by the way, I really appreciate it. I know it's uh, a little scary sometimes, but I do appreciate it. And then a uh, monthly basis, so seeing some stuff come in here, like research, new tools, proof of concepts, um, framework maintenance, you know, contribution, mentorship, leadership in automation. These are the things that we are doing, but none of that is really being communicated. And the problem is, is that I think that, again, the reason why this happens is reflection is hard. 
it's known sometimes as the curse of knowledge. And I have this, like, with the work that I do at Ministry of Testing, um, you know, I, I teach, but I also teach to teach. So I work with my colleague, uh, Sarah Deary. Um, she's got, she comes from a completely different background. She's a, a, a PhD a professor whiz, amazing person, um, but has also done a lot of teaching in academia and stuff, and she taught me how to teach, and I do that with the others. And one of the first things we always have, like with people who want to become educators in automation, is it's hard to unpack that knowledge, that's that information that you learn. Our experiences are kind of these weird nebulous blobs um, that it's difficult to unpack, unpick and then put into some sort of kind of linear form to teach others. And that's why we have these sort of aspects where it's easier to just talk about the tools because they're kind of explicit, they're there, whereas the other stuff is not so much. So, yeah, we have this challenge. And, you know, I've just sort of kind of shared, you know, we've just done a little get to know each other. Don't worry, there's no more participation. You can all breathe and relax now. It's okay. But we, we've, we've done that. We've looked at these, um, these, these job sites and stuff like that. Um, but obviously, it's all kind of anecdotal. But we've seen similar at the stuff that we're doing at Ministry of Testing. So we have created what we call the uh, automation curriculum. Uh, it's a community curated curriculum. It's so fun to say. <laughs> the three C's. But we, we endeavoured to sort of kind of answer this question about what our automators do. We wanted to, myself and Richard uh, Bradshaw, boss boss, you know, my colleague with automation and testing, we felt very strongly that all that stuff that you've just mentioned, that exists, but it exists in pockets within our testing community. We wanted to bring it to the fore. We wanted to communicate it clearly so that we can share what our value is and also we can help the next generation so that young, wee little Mark of 15 years ago with his crappy Python library um, can actually get some support and some help. Because I think another thing is, is that we are doomed to repeat ourselves if we don't share this information. So we created the curriculum and we did a similar sort of activity but with a larger base with the testing community. So we did things, jobs analysis and needs analysis. So that's what that searching stuff was for, looking at those job roles is jobs analysis. Needs analysis is surveying and interviewing automators, asking them those questions. What do you do on a weekly, uh, month, uh, sorry, daily, weekly, and monthly basis? Um, we did that say, in terms of surveys, we did it in interviews, and then we analyzed a bunch of job, into, uh, job adverts to learn from those as well. We spoke to managers of automators. We spoke to recruiters as well. And we kept seeing this thing. The image of what automators is is not the same as what, is, what we're actually doing, what we're actually getting involved in. So, yeah, there was a challenge there. There was something to do about it. So we have this, we have this disconnect between the perception of what we do. Because a lot of the time, what is seen of us is the output of our work. As automators, you know, we will write some automated checks and they will run somewhere. And that's what the team will see. But that's like, you know, the tip of the iceberg. There's all the other stuff that's going on. So how do we go about uh, capturing that, realizing that those skills exist and are necessary, and then how do we communicate that? So coming back to my own career, um, as I say, I, I dropped the... Uh, the um, Python library very quickly. I discovered water, um, started working with that, and then ultimately I came into sort of kind of working with Selenium WebDriver and working with Java. And I was, you know, moving through jobs. I'd started moving into like contracting as well. Um, and that box, I, I, I just, I love that analogy, the idea of the box. Um, that box was well and firmly built in for me. And the problem was, was I ultimately ended up on a team with uh, good developers, terrifying. I was working with a team that was very, uh, very invested in quality. I was uh, with a team that was very agile. So I, I'd say a joke, I had good developers, but I had developers who cared about quality. I had a product owner who cared about quality and was communicating regularly. I had uh, a project manager, Scrum Master, who was kind of leading the charge with this sort of stuff. 
A pipe dream, yes. But there was a problem, and it was me. I have to admit that the problem was me. I was stuck with my tools. And the problem was, was all the developers were like, we care about quality, so we'll uh, follow like, things like TDD practices and ATDD, and we'll actually automate things and you know, build good, robust checks that give us feedback. But they were using different tools to what I was using. And I spent a lot of the time sort of, I wouldn't say like deliberately being like difficult, but I, I kept wanting to come back to this conversation of, I don't think we're doing it right. But I, I felt like that because I think that I was worried about the value that I was delivering. I didn't think I was really, because we were using different tools and that was all established. I had not really a lot to do, or I felt I didn't have a lot to do. There was sort of this, 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 yeah, this issue where I, I felt like I needed to do more. I felt like there was something, there was more I could do, but I couldn't really communicate, I couldn't really understand it. So I sort of leaned into like, let's not use these tools, let's use these tools, because I use them. Again, I had another choice that was presented to me. The first choice was to move on, or perhaps learn some new tools, um, and maybe expand my views. By this point, I was a contractor, so I was, it was quite easy for me to move on. Or I could start reflecting, I could start asking, where are those gaps in my knowledge? Where are those gaps in my experiences? And this time, I, th I feel like I made the right choice. And what I did was, um, rather than leaning so much on the tools, I started thinking about testing again. I started thinking about, how do I improve my testing skills so that I can do other things just than manipulate tools? So I went down more of a path of learning about testing. I took testing training courses. I joined meetups. I went to testing conferences. Um, I got involved in the testing community. And what was really fascinating from this process was that I started to realize that there were other things that I was doing that uh, were providing value. I, as my testing skills improved, as I started learning how to question things, as I started appreciating the value of things like shift left and uh, questioning ideas and diagrams and requirements, Questioning context, questioning myself, when I started being able to do things like exploratory testing, I started seeing new opportunities for automation and started seeing that there was other things that I was doing that I hadn't really explicitly sort of looked at and said, yes, that is of value, that is something that can help the team. And it was through, um, through improving my testing experiences that it kind of elevated my automation experiences. And again, this is something we've seen in some of the research that we've done as well, is that when we talk to those who are successful with automation, there is a strong uh, understanding that automation is in service to testing. That's what Richard and I have been doing with this whole automation and testing stuff, is talking about it, you know, automation to support testing, not to replace it, to support it. And the only way we can do that with value is by understanding testing and having strong testing skills. And it's funny because as this sort of journey started, so did this 10 year sort of journey of asking this question of myself about what automators do. And I met, I say, my colleague Richard, um, and we started doing the AIT stuff. But what was really interesting was that we had this running joke for a while that he was basically spying on me in my house. I think he still is. He's probably spying on me right now. Hi, Richard. Um, but joking aside, like, we had the same experiences, the same sort of journeys. He talks about stories of being in a corner automating a bunch of test cases and then being asked, what does the system do? And he goes, well, I don't know. I've, just, I've automated the test cases. I don't know how the system works. And he had the sort of similar realizations. And again, we've seen the same sort of things in the curriculum. So that time, I had a path to choose, and I feel like I chose the right sort of choice. And it's from that I started to realize, yeah, the value of what we do, and the value of yeah, what all of us do. And that's, again, like these are the things that we sort of discovered um, within our, um, 
within the curriculum stuff that we've done, but through my own experiences, through Richard's, through sort of uh, anecdotal conversations with others. As automators, we are strategists, planners. We are advocates for this work. And you mentioned that sort of stuff in Slido. We have to understand our context. We have to understand our systems to make the right choices about what tools we should use and what things we should and shouldn't automate and how we're going to go about setting up these automation tools and stuff. None of that stuff's mentioned in job roles, really. None of that stuff is mentioned on Google. We also started to realize um, that the uh, kind of way of presenting the value of automation isn't rooted in things like coverage. It isn't rooted in the number of automated case, test cases you've done or checks. But actually, successful automation is rooted in this idea of feedback loops. That we, as, like, as testers, regardless of the automation stuff, our whole purpose of testing is to, you know, discover different things that are going on, play with the products, play with the applications, get some sort of information and feedback that to the team so they can action it. If we do that as individuals, we are fast in some ways, but slow in others. So we can use automation to speed those feedback loops. You, know, you have all those checks running in your pipeline. Each one of those is giving a little bit of feedback about how your system is working at a given time. If there's anything that's changed from iteration 12 to iteration 13 of your application, that's the value. And then also connected to that is this idea that we automate more than just checks. Even the tools that are being advertised to us as automators are a slice of the tools that we can use. Not all automation has to be um, rooted in um, checks and codified oracles and assertions. You know, you're four pa you've got a seven-page mortgage document that you need to fill in. Why not use WebDriver to fill in the first five pages for 50 times? And then you can carry on doing your testing. You've got a mountain of data that you need to set up for your application. Why not set up some sort of API that connects directly to the database that you can say with a Slack bot and say, hey, create me 20 records of X. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's those sort of things where we understand our, uh, what we're doing as testers and going, I need, I need to get to point, uh, a point B in my testing process as quickly as possible so I can use tools to sort of accelerate that part, supporting what I'm doing, not replacing. And, you know, I, I say this as someone who's a massive advocate for these things and, and, and uh, you know, I, I think I will always advocate for these sort of things. But through having conversations with automators, they were having the same experiences. But again, it was in little pockets. None of this stuff is really sort of communicated at large. So uh, we took all this information um, and uh, we continued our process um, over the last year, myself, Richard and Sarah, um, with the support of the team. And we started carrying out what we call task analysis. So we, we identified the common, common activities, the common responsibilities of an automator. And then we went through each of those, and broke those down, and evaluated them. We ran collaborative workshops with the testing community. We've had over nearly 200 people involved in, like, the, in this process. Went through each of those, and once we were happy with the tasks and the responsibilities, we then converted those into learning outcomes. So now we have our curriculum. We have a structured um, list, a structured journey to, for, for, for people to sort of start their learning journey or for people to kind of improve themselves and you know, perform gap analysis on their own skill sets. So yeah, it was through this process that we started to realize that we had an answer to our question of what automators do. Now, I'm not saying this is the definitive answer, but this is informed through these conversations with uh, uh, many people. Yes, we are people that work with tools. Yes, we are people who create automated checks, and we have to maintain them and run them. 
but we are strategists and planners, as I said before. We have to understand context, understand risk. We have to understand quality and how risk impacts that and how automation can help those things. With our strategy in place, we have to plan as well. How are we gonna actualize our strategy? And we also have to understand you know, the gamut of tools that are out there so that we can use the right tools for the right job. Identifying problems before tools. We are architects and framework creators, maintainers. You know, we talked about feedback loops. You may be someone who has to create that initial minimum viable framework, that minimum viable feedback loop to demonstrate that the work that you want to do is actually of value. And then you have to advocate for that. And then, you know, if you get buy-in, you may be that person who has to maintain it. You may have to you know, ensure everything is working smoothly and upgrade dependencies and add new features as things come through. We are communicators as well. I always like the idea of, you know, like if a tree falls in the woods and no one's around, does it make a sound? If a build radiator goes red and there's no one in the office, like, have we delivered any quality? It's the same idea, like, we need to understand that there's a symbiosis between ourselves as automators and the tools that we use, and that we need to be able to communicate what's actually going on in our systems based on these applications and what they're telling us. And then we have to investigate and fix those issues. And then, you know, the big thing I'm a fan of is like, you know, we are toolsmiths as well. We support our teams um, in many different ways by identifying and implementing tools that help us just move that little bit quicker or get to at some point a little bit faster. Again, not replacing, enhancing. So when I think about it, yeah, what does an automator do? I think about all these different things. And I think a lot of you out there as well are the same. I just don't think it's ever really been made explicit because reflection is hard. It's hard to take time to unpick that nebulous blob of knowledge. And, you know, we're under such demands to deliver things all the time. It, you know, it's difficult to take that time. And as I say, all of this is supported by a strong foundational knowledge of testing as well. So core competencies in automation, you have to have risk analysis skills. You have to understand like how the SDLC process works and how teams communicate and how to leverage that and influence. You need to understand like where testing, like continuous testing, understanding that and understanding where automation can help in different places. So, that's all well and good. You know, I'm talking about like big, abstract, lofty, we've talked to hundreds of people and we've got this sort of stuff. But to bring it back to us as individuals, because it could be like, oh, that's all well and good and stuff, but I've still got to go back next week and I've still got a whole load of uh, things to automate and a load of pressure on me. So, how can we bring this back to ourselves as individuals and communicate value to our teams um, like on a one-to-one -one basis? So the first thing is, is, I think, you know, what I've tried to sort of say here is, is we do more than code. We do more than just manipulate tools. And we need to celebrate that. And we need to be vocal about that. And that may be that, you know, it's something that you do just in your teams and you just talk about, you know, in, in a stand-up, uh, just talk a bit more about the things that you've been doing on a daily basis with your automation stuff. It may be that, you know, if you're someone who likes to blog, someone likes to share, Pick some of that stuff that feels like not totally rooted in that sort of image of automators as tool manipulators. Pick something a little bit around the edges and talk about that. Share about your experiences in that way as well. And also, take the time to reflect. Have some time to be, you know, run some sort of kind of like mini personal retrospective. You know, take five minutes every month, every week, every day, and ask yourself, what am I doing on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis? Because what you'll find is as well is, not only will you may be surprise yourself and be like, 
oh, you know, that's cool. I'm uh, doing, you know, I'm doing some awesome stuff. But you may also start to see where those weaknesses are, where those opportunities are to um, improve your abilities and your skills, where to go and look for, you know, support from the community and from learning materials. So yeah, ultimately, in summary, like, if there's one thing to take away is, is that appreciate that as automators you do more than just working with, with these tools and with this code. And yeah, take that time to sort of kind of just give yourself a little pat on the back. You know, it's, I'm British, so you know, we're all like tightly bundled up coils of no, 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 no. You know, it's hard to sit down and celebrate sometimes the things that we do. So yeah, just giving yourself a pause to do that sort of stuff and understand that you know, there's other people out there who are doing similar things to you and delivering value. And then use that as an impetus to guide your learning, to guide your communications in terms of value to others. So yeah, that's, that's kind of uh, the crux of this. But I wanted to just finish with an invitation an invitation to all of you. Um, so obviously I've talked about this uh, curriculum um, and one of the things I wanna make clear is that this is an open source curriculum. So it's been kickstarted by Ministry of Testing um, but this belongs to the testing community. So we've put this on, uh, I can't quite remember the license but it is available and free for you to use. And you can use it in different ways. Perhaps you are someone who's looking to get into automation you're that person, like me, all that time ago, who is at that path, wanting to ask that question about what tools should we learn. Perhaps take a look at the curriculum, look at the learning journeys, um, the learning outcomes, and see what many things there are that you can learn um, to improve your automation skills. Or if you're someone who's looking to, you know, take it to the next level or get some polish, have a look at that way. If you're a manager, um, use this to guide your job roles. Think about it. You know, think about like, you know, you want the best automators working at your team. The best automators are doing all these other different things that an automator does. So use it as a guide to, um, you know, spec out your job roles. If you are a content creator, if you are a teacher or an educator as well, why not take a look at this as well? Because there's about a hundred different courses on YouTube alone about how to use WebDriver. There isn't anybody talking about visualizing models of systems beyond like maybe a handful of people and how that helps with like strategizing and planning automation. There's a lot of opportunities out there for those of you who want to create content and you want to educate as well. So that's there for you to use. If you are someone who has just looked at what I've said and said this is what an automator does and you're like nope. Big, hard, no, Mark, disagree with all of that. I want to hear from you. We want to hear from you. This is owned by the community. So as a community, we will continue to maintain and update it and change it as our industry changes as well. So that's my invitation. Come join us. Come give us your insights. Ask yourself what you do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to share that information. Thank you very much. Um, I'm around for the rest of today and tomorrow. If you want to learn more about that or just uh, chat about automation and testing and stuff, come say hi at some point. That's my usual social bump. And then because uh, my publisher tells me I have to do this sort of stuff, I hate marketing, but I do have a book. If you would like to learn more about, yeah, there's something, I can hear the laughs, yeah. But if you would like to learn more about sort of the things that I do teach, I do have a book, um, and you can get 35% off. I do have free ebook copies to come uh, to give away. So if you would like just a free ebook copy, come say hello. You do have to talk to me longer than 30 seconds though to get the ebook. That is, yeah, I heard that as well. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Oh, that's it, yeah, just leave it to languish on lean pub, yeah. Um, but thank you very much uh, for listening to me today. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure being here. I hope you have a great rest of the day. I hope you had a great day yesterday. Um, and I hope that, you know, 
you take what I've had to share and what everyone else who's speaking shares and you use it to elevate your careers and elevate the community. Thank you very much.